You're listening to Crowning Ignorant Kings, a podcast for citizens with like minds who love God, follow Christ, and have a desire to be an ambassador for the kingdom of heaven on earth. We are John and Charlene Donaldson. We're teachers building a kingdom community. Thank you again for joining us. Now let's adjust our crowns. We do the same thing. Our words carry power. Right. He only wants to, he speaks what he wants to see. See. And I, I was trying my best. I've been taking notes. For those of you who are not familiar with us, we're both teachers. We both have a, <laughs> have a lot that we could share. And I don't want to interrupt her train of thought. So I was taking notes and some of the things that she was pointing out. And it was all good. But just to that last thing that you were talking about, I wanted you to get to that point. Because you mentioned it earlier that the subconscious, we don't understand how powerful it is and how powerful our words are. Mm -hmm. And that it doesn't know when we're joking. But when you brought that point up, I thought about for those of us in um, who are familiar with computers and electronics and things like that. When I was in school learning about computer repair, there was a we got to a point there was a term that they gave us it was giggo g-i-g-o and it means garbage in garbage out because so many times people who don't understand computers or they're they're typing away and they're angry at the computer because it's not doing what it what they want it to do but the computer is only going to do what you ask it to do so when you're programming it and you're typing in all these things it's only going to get what you ask and that's the same thing as our subconscious it's like our mind is so powerful but it works in conjunction with our soul with our spirit and with our body our mouth so when we believe something or whether you do it without realizing it, like we say subconsciously and you say something that's even though it may not be an agreement or you're joking your subconscious is is activated on what you said so you're gonna get what you said so if you're constantly saying man i'm broke mm -hmm. i don't have you know i can't afford this i didn't say that <laughs> that's the situation you're gonna find yourself that's in what you're gonna you're shaping that world to always afford you or have you in a place where you you never have right so that's why you know the word tells us like speak those things that are not as though they were you say well you know, it, it's, it's say my, I, I'm a millionaire in transition or, you know, I'm a millionaire and the money just hasn't been transferred to my bank account. So, you know, something positive just to kind of train your mind and your subconscious that I'm in a different state. What I see is just a fact temporary but that doesn't mean that that's the truth about my my whole situation so i'm wealthy but i may not you know i may not have it in my hand at the moment so you just got to say it just flip it that way so even though it's a joke and you understand your subconscious and say well he said he wealthy mm -hmm. you know she said she's got she's a millionaire so let's bring some things closer let's draw some things to their um into their atmosphere to their you know area let's introduce them to some people or you know but that's how it works it, it seems strange but yeah but um i was just go back to where you started and uh verse 24 matthew 6 24 through 34 and you were talking about no one can serve two masters or either he will hate one and love the other or else he will be loyal to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. But those of us know mammon is like the God of money or, you know, it's just a form of money. So I always looked at this verse as your motivation, the reason why you're doing things. It's like, you know, you, you actually, <coughs> we, we have to get to a mindset living as a kingdom citizen that you don't take a job for the purpose the motivation of money you take it for the purpose of sharpening your leadership skills 
If you have a, you know, you have the idea for a business or this or that, it's like you find out what your purpose is, find out that thing that you love to do and you find work in that area in order to sharpen those skills. But your whole purpose in going to work should not be for money because we have to get to a place where we believe that God is our provider. And then when we get to this other part of the passage where he's telling you, you know, why are you worried about this stuff? There's a, there's, you can have a concern or you can, you plan for it, you prepare, you can have a, a reasonable concern, but when your concern is out of balance, then that's when you begin to worry. That's when you get into fear and then you start, your mind starts to put things in your mouth like, I don't have enough. And then it comes out your mouth. And then because it's coming out your mouth, you because you're looking at the situation and not realizing that God is my provider. So instead of saying, you know, this is the situation, Mm -hmm. but God is my provider and you're going to get what you need. You'll Mm -hmm. say, I don't have, you know, what am I going to wear? What am I going to eat? But you brought out a a good point earlier. It does also talk, speak to your, um, your self-worth. Because something it is it was something simple that I thought about a while ago. I forget where it came from or this it was just like a, a train of thought that kinda triggers something in me. When you start thinking about your identity, your self worth, your uh, self confidence, when you're looking at God as your father and your provider, I had that, this question came up in myself. You're questioning my character. God was like simply saying, okay, so you're saying that I'm a deadbeat dad, <laughs> you know, yeah. I can't provide for my children or I've promised you things or I've shown you things to come or I that, you know, talking. something yeah. as simple as what you're going to eat today or having clothes. I know you need these things. So you're questioning my character. If I say something, it's going to happen. Even though you don't see it right now, you know, your confidence and this and that brings on that fear. And then you start saying the opposite and then, you know, having pity parties. You know, mm-hmm. So this is probably where Jesus catch them at. You, you having a pity party worrying about mm-hmm. what you're going to eat and, you know, where you're going to live. I know you need provision. You need shelter, all these things. No, you go out into the world and you practice your skill. I told you you're a teacher. I told you you're, you know, you're a, a medical person. I told you you're a political person. I told you mm-hmm. you're a business owner. You go out and you practice those skills in that area and I'll provide. I'll make sure that the money that you need will be provided. I have some more things, but we're going to take turns. <laughs> <laughs> and I was just thinking that um, by him telling them these things is like he can see where the focus is you're so concerned about your life what you're going to eat drink live what you know right. all these things that the focus is not on you know your right. purpose and the things of god and expanding god's kingdom in the earth so when the um the gospel of the kingdom which is the kingdom it, um christ coming to inform them about the kingdom of god Right. Uh, which he didn't come to inform them about the death, burial, and resurrection. That's not what I've been taught that that was the gospel, but the gospel is the kingdom of God because he tells them, but seek first. This is before anything else. This is what you go after, the kingdom of God and his righteousness, his way of lining up and being in right standing with him so that you're in position to receive those things that you're entitled to as a citizen. It's like in the natural, if I were to break a law, I have to deal with the consequences. Whatever consequences come with me breaking the law, I won't receive. Sometimes people lose their freedom. Right. Um, They may have to be incarcerated for a certain amount. It depends on whatever the crime is. Or a person may be fined where they have to pay money. Or they may get limited jail time on weekends or whatever. Or it depends on whatever uh, the situation was as to what your punishment or consequences are. So you kind of look at that with kingdom. You know, righteousness has something to do with the law. So it's like you had to really be in line with something I kind of looked up comes from, as you mentioned before, the discipline of the law. It's not a religion and it implies right positioning. And I know by faith we've been declared righteous. You know, once you accept and confess Christ, you're brought into right standing with him. Mm -hmm. 
And it means to be in alignment with authority, right standing, right fellowship, correct fellowship, right relationship, to be in legal or lawful alignment. So the kingdom of God, there are laws or principles that govern his kingdom. And that's how you get all of the things yeah, that you need, need because righteousness is being in alignment right. or agreement with the, yeah. the principles the law being in agreement and in line you can't keep breaking all kind of principles right and fail to put them in practice and think you're going to reap or the benefits or the results basically tell you have to um, put these things into practice you have to practice the principles you right. have to learn of my way, my thinking, and how I do things, all these things are guaranteed. Mm -hmm. But there's a way to get it. Yeah. To get how, because this is how we live. Right. He's telling you the process right there, all of this yeah. in the same passage. Thank you for listening to Crowning Ignorant Kings, where we are cultivating a kingdom community. Please sign up for our podcast, download, like, and share. Look for us on your social media platforms. If you'd like to reach out to us, please send us an email at crowningignorantkings at gmail.com.